Water at 8 megapascals and 20 degrees C enters an insulated hydraulic turbine. Where would you use or see a hydraulic turbine in practice? A uh, big hydroelectric generating station, something like, uh, what is it, Hoover out in Boulder City? Hoover Dam. Hoover Dam, right. They have some really big hydraulic turbines there, been running for a long time. So the water goes through it. It comes in at really high pressure, 28 megapascal, that's just a number. And then it drops to one megapascal. It expands or drops pressure to one megapascal, okay? So here, uh, the effects of motion and gravity are neglected and the dead state temperature and pressure are given. The first question of the three parts is, what is the work developed? So you can make an illustration of the turbine, kind of reproducing what we had on the other slide. Goes out at one, in at one, out at two, and there's uh, shaft power, the steady states, so one M dot through the system. And when you do an energy balance, for the control volume around this turbine, just an energy, nothing to do with exergy yet. Part A is just energy balance. What do we find? We find that the um, in the mass flow rate times <laughs> enthalpy one minus enthalpy two is equal to W dot. Do you agree? Thumbs up. Couple steps. You should go slowly as you study, but I only have a limited amount of space and I need to go a little faster, okay? But you need to make sure that you agree. Start with the most general equation, conservation of energy, and manipulate each term. Now, it's an insulated turbine, so we know Q dot's equal to zero, et cetera. Or you have to say, oh, I'm gonna make this assumption. So I have a table of properties here is the enthalpy state one. Here is the enthalpy state two. And so we can compute this W dot over M dot, also sometimes written as lowercase w. Lowercase w specific work is equal to just H1 minus H2. And you calculate lowercase w. The answer for part A comes in at a whopping 6.56 kilojoules per kilogram water going through the hydraulic turbine. Part B, what is the isentropic efficiency? This efficiency is what you were used to in the previous semester. You mastered the isentropic efficiency. Now, for part C, it's the exergetic efficiency. Okay, so in order to calculate the isentropic efficiency, you need to consider not just expansion from 1 to 2, but from 1 to 2s, where the pressure at state 2s is known and the entropy is known. True? So you, ex you conceptually calculate state 2s and you find that this is state H2s. That's the enthalpy at state 2s. And so the work, assuming isentropic expansion, is not, it's, it's going to be H1 minus H2S, is not 6.56 uh, uh, kilojoules per kilogram, but is actually 6.99 kilojoules per kilogram. So if you had completely reversible expansion from 8,000 to 1,000 kilopascal, you would get more work out per unit mass flow. So we calculate the turbine isentropic efficiency is the actual divided by the isentropic work. And so it's 6.56 divided by 6.99. You'd find it's 93.8%. That is an efficiency measure, which is a good efficiency measure for this turbine. Um, and now we have a second efficiency measure known as the exergetic efficiency measure. Well, how do we calculate that? We could put epsilon T. They did, the book usually doesn't put a T for turbine, but I like to put it on there. It's uh, uh, the second law efficiency for the turbine. It's equal to the work that you actually get out divided by the change in the flow exergies. Now, I computed these and put an extra column for the flow extra G because it's just another property, is it not? <coughs> and this was computed in Excel. 
True? You could kind of see that. And all I did was for the flow exergy at state 1 was I said uh, EF1 is equal to H1 minus H0, the dead state. Well, I ran first uh, row is the dead state property, so I had to get H0 right here and S0 right there. So H1 minus H0, <laughs> so it's 91.42 minus this value for H0 minus T0. Well, for this problem, the dead state temperature is 25 or T0 is 298 Kelvin. So we put 298 there. S minus S0. And I neglect effects of motion and gravity, so kinetic and potential energy are negligible at state 1, 2, S, and 2. And so that's how we calculate it. You use this value, this value, this value, this value, plus 298, and boom, you have it. How many people have used Excel? At the end of the semester, all the hands will go up because you'll have to use it, and I'll show you how to use it for, uh, for the um, problem, for the design projects. So, but don't, it's just a table to help organize information, and then you can use different values out of different cells, <laughs> parts of the table, to, up, to make it automated so it's really easy to calculate something like this number right here, 8.0. 749. I didn't input by typing it in, I let it calculate it. Right? And likewise, it calculated this one, it calculated that one. So we have now the difference in these flow exergies, one to two. And when we calculate the, the uh, second law efficiency, we get 93.6%. Which one's better? They're not, not any better. They're both different measures. 